it's a little after 5 a.m. Uh, got dressed, uh, showered. That water was incredibly cold, yet oddly kind of weirdly refreshing. It was also very odd. Uh, TMI just walking around naked <laughs> outside of the tent to go to the shower and then come back in. So I'm going to head off to work now. It took me probably about the same amount of time to get ready. Um, but man, I didn't even use like a gallon of water to take a shower. So that that's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat observation. So yeah, we'll see how the rest of the day goes. I just got home from work and it was a way longer day than I anticipated. It is 4.55 p.m. And to get a solid eight hours of sleep, my bedtime is in just over three hours. So I'm going to do a little bit different of a blog today and cover what it is that I'm going through uh, after getting out of work to get back into the tent life. So first thing, as silly as it sounds, I'm taking off my boots. I'm going to take off my pants and put on some shorts, fold up my pants because I'll probably wear these one more time before I wash them again. This polo, I only, I'll only wear it once before I wash it. I, I can't wear stuff twice. Um, as far as this morning, once again, it went really well. I uh, got the towel hanging up so it doesn't smell. Should be nice and dry. I'll fold that up and get it ready for tomorrow. Uh, get my clothes set out and then uh, transfer the water, refill the shower, all that stuff. So give me a second to uh, change and I'll be right back and we'll continue on the time. or continue on the adventure. Um, I also started the timer just to see how long it actually takes for me to get completely settled in and back to tent and on a farm mode clothes change our shorts are different socks on it is hot as sin in here with the rain flaps closed i don't leave it open when i leave because i leave so early in the morning that all the condensation is going to get in and make a make everything wet potentially smell so if anybody has any tricks of the trade uh to help me allow there to be airflow through here yet while I'm gone at work without getting everything wet, comment below. I'd really appreciate the feedback. Next thing, get my shoes back on. Or not shoes, my farm shoes, tent shoes. Oh my gosh, it's hot in here. And let's get outside. We gotta transfer the fresh water that's been filtered in our homemade Berkey system and get that, replenish the shower and then refill the water bucket that we're collecting for laundry. And all right, head back to the shower and grab the homemade shower out of it. I left that in there this morning. And, uh, oh man, zipper. Let's see how everything looks in here. So I hung my loofah, I had my shampoo and soap in there, and then here's the homemade shower and I put down my shower mat. I just kind of hung my, or set my light that I have in the tent there on the ground and washed myself. Looks like I used just under a gallon of water. And let's see if there's any pressure in this bad boy yet. Yeah, so I found the jet setting worked the best. I actually had a little pressure and I felt like I was actually rinsing myself off. So I'm gonna get this filled. All right, I had an unannounced special guest as I was finishing up that last little clip. Uh, my mom and dad stopped out. They don't have Amazon Prime, so I ordered something for them and it will be here tomorrow. And not having Prime, it was gonna be here or to their house on Sunday and they leave for a week on Friday. But back to the chores. I'm at 21 minutes now since I got home. I need to fill this back up, replenish the filtered water, put this back in the shower that seemed, or the shower tent that seemed to work pretty well. And then finish getting my stuff set up for tomorrow morning. Try this from a different angle. Still have some water left over in our homemade Berkey. So replenish my drinking and clothes washing bucket. 
We're gonna need 10 gallons built up by Sunday. I think I'll be able to do laundry on Sunday. And uh, shower water coupled with that is gonna be a stretch with how long it takes to, to filter the water in here. over a gallon. I think what I'm gonna do is cap this off and put some fresh water in the top and then also put some fresh water in the bucket that I use to store it. It's been about a day so let's go over to the well see if it still has its prime. Settle it that comes out at first. Let's pump up some. There we go. It hasn't lost its prime. Let's get rid of that gross black gooey magic. Fill this up. Get our homemade Berkey filled back up. The other thing. The other thing that really takes a lot of time with all this is I am, you know, documenting the whole journey. So, starting the camera, stopping the camera. Oh man, I don't know what is in there, but I'm gonna get a new sponge that we picked up and clean it. This is a cool rubber disposable sponge that my wife picked up on Amazon. sediment in there. Also, some of it looks like rust, and I know that we have rusty water, but I would also suspect that this pot is not as high of grade stainless steel as what they would like you to believe, which I'm kind of disappointed about, but at the same time, it was really inexpensive and it was from Walmart. So maybe a slight lesson learned there, or like I said, it's just because of the hard water we're using. Let's get this lid back on here. Check the reservoir. I think I'm gonna see if I can do this. See, it's kind of odd. There's no, there's no rust in the reservoir bucket, which makes me wonder if it is just due to how hard the water is that we're filtering. This filter should be getting rid of all that rust. But for the most part, our sponge took care of it. So there is our water chore done for the day. What do we got next? I didn't put it on camera, but when I opened the shower, I forgot that I had left a pair of boxers in there because for whatever reason, I wore my boxers out to go take a shower. And I think it was just the fear of like being outside naked. But I, I quickly realized like, there's no one that is going to see me get in the shower. The nearest house is hundreds of yards away. And uh, if somebody is out here, they shouldn't be out here. And we're going to have a bigger problem than just them seeing me naked. So I got a set of dirty clothes pile down there. And um, now I guess I'm going to get my towel folded up for the morning and make sure everything's squared away here in the tent and go on to picking my daily quota of five pounds of blueberries oh man i can't believe i forgot i went home to grab uh just a few things and i've gone home twice now to get a pillow both times i forgot a pillow boom remember my pillow so epic there that should drastically increase my sleep quality the inflatable pillow that was on here just my head slid off it just it's it's doable in a pinch, but man, when I got an awesome pillow like I do, I missed it really fast. For blueberries this time, I'm going to the field that's actually right behind our campsite. And uh, this is closer to a tree line and there's a lot of berries on the ground because we're not harvesting these. A lot of the berries that are on the bush are super mushy yet, but because of the rain and the wind, the trees, it's, it's pretty much knocked off all the soft berries. 
and uh, these will hold a little bit better in my tent until I bring them back to the house. But as far as the field, uh, we used to call this, or we still call it the pine tree patch. This is one of the first fields planted on the farm. Uh, it's over, ah, it's not a hundred years old, but it's been around since the forties, fifties, give or take around there. And um, my dad, when he decided to stop uh, blueberry farming, he actually started giving a lot of these bushes away to uh, up and coming farmers or people that are trying to start their own. And um, these have always been a really robust variety. Uh, I said they're called blue crop, but um, the bushes for blue crop, these are some of the biggest you would see in the area. And it's not just because they're big right now because they haven't been pruned. They were always very big. And the tonnage he would get off this field was insane um, compared to a lot of people in the area. But it just, it still wasn't enough. And a lot had shifted in the local blueberry market. And I'll kind of touch on that stuff as we progress here in this series and as you follow along on our journey. But I'm gonna get the five pounds picked and then eat dinner and pretty much edit the video that I'm making today and go to bed. It was a quick day. All right, I'm gonna to continue to give it to you straight in here. Uh, what I thought were gonna be firm, they're not firm. They're, I mean, some of them are, but a lot of them are. And I have no intentions of going back home until Thursday, which is two days from now, to grab my golf clubs and my wife's car, uh, just because of what I got planned for the weekend. And these things will be pulverized if I keep them in the tent until then, and then in my car while I'm at work on Thursday. Um, so what I'll do is check out a different variety uh, called Elliot's tomorrow. They're very early, which means they're very sour because they'll turn blue without the sugars being fully ripened. Um, but I've heard that sour berries make a good wine, or at least part of the berries that make up the wine being sour make it good. So we'll definitely pick uh, those. And over the next month, I should be able to pick uh to my heart's content in that field because of uh the fact that they're a later season variety so yeah uh, i think what i'm going to do next is edit for a little while and then make dinner i can't remember if it was day one or day two but i said i would figure out a way to be more efficient so i just had an idea i'm gonna fill my dishes bucket with water while the cast iron skillet is heating up that way i don't have to bring the dishes all the way back over here or I guess I'm still going to bring them over here. But I already got the water ready to go. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. I'm actually going to put the soap in it now. But yeah, every little thing I can do to save time is going to help out in the long run. While this beautiful bacon is cooking, I'll, I'll cover a little bit. But this is probably going to be the last part I film for the day. I definitely figured out that I did not eat enough calories or food yesterday or for breakfast this morning. I typically don't eat breakfast, but around 11 a.m. I was lightheaded, super fatigued, and I just realized that with all the calories I'm burning doing all this and not having food at my disposal at home, I'm not having enough calories. So I'm gonna make probably 1.5x the dinner that I did yesterday. Same meal though, bacon, asparagus, potatoes, and uh, top sirloin. And then tomorrow I'll get back to having a protein shake for breakfast and then also hydrate more. I have a gallon of water off screen that I've been drinking well since I got home and uh, hopefully that will help. As far as total time to get ready after I got home and get all the, the chores done besides picking, it was about 35 minutes. So hopefully I can cut down on that every day, get faster at making dinner, getting prepped for bed, and um, just be more efficient with my time out here. Tomorrow, uh, what I have planned, ooh, look at that beautiful bacon. I'm gonna cook it for a second longer. As far as what I have planned tomorrow, um, probably should be out of work a little earlier than today and home. And uh, I'm gonna prune a row or two of, uh, of trees out of the blueberries, cook dinner, and just continue to get used to being out here. So tomorrow's video might be a little shorter. Cool, look forward to sharing it with you. See you guys tomorrow.